Morning everyone, uh, my name's Laura and uh, we're filming Ask an Academic, episode two. I'm here with senior lecturer um, Cam Rolls and uh, we're just going to have a chat about Cam's life and what he studies here at ANU and what he teaches. So without further ado, we might get the interview going. So Cam, uh, what do you enjoy doing in your free time? Well, I like spending time with family, uh, reading. Um, I'm really into news and current affairs, but I like mm. reading a wide variety of things. I love history, um, I like novels. Um, also really love music mm -hmm. and um, uh, really enjoy that both live and, and recorded music as well. What kind of genre do you like? Uh, I like a wide variety but um, probably my favourite band of all time is probably the Beatles. Even Cam. though they're a bit before my time. Showing your age though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. It's but um, I also find that you know, my kids' music, um, they're 11 and 12 and, and particularly mm -hmm. my oldest boys, right into a lot of artists, so um, I've learned a lot from him and really enjoy his music as well. What kind of music uh, are they interested in? Um, so um, they're off to see, oh, the oldest boys off to see Bruno Mars in, um, in uh, March next year. Oh, so he's really good. into that. Mm -hmm. And um, they like, you know, um, Ed Sheeran and um, all the popular sort of artists. Taylor oh, very Swift. good. Impressive. Yeah. <laughs> More than me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my next question is, uh, what, uh, how do you enjoy being a lecturer at ANU? Like, what's the best part about being a lecturer? I think there's two really good parts about being a lecturer at ANU, and probably this job in general. Mm -hmm. um, so if you take as a starting point that, um, and it's not quite this, but we spend sort of half our time researching and half our time teaching. Yeah. I think it's an enormous privilege um, in the research side to actually be able to go to work and have the autonomy to decide, okay, this is what I'd like to do for half my working time. Mm. I mean, I, I don't know any other job that lets you do that unless you work for yourself. So it's a huge, huge privilege. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, in terms of teaching, I really love um, the interaction with students. I don't think I'd ever want to be an academic who is research only. I'd want to teach as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I really enjoy that connection with them, the idea that we can chat about an area that I'm obviously really passionate about and interested in and you know to see students sort of developing that passion and interest and then becoming um, more like colleagues as they progress into their own career I really enjoy that aspect of the work. Yeah I think something that uh, you know is quite special about you is that you've got a really good rapport with students and oh, something you. that you've um, started doing I'm not sure whether many people know but just invited others to go have coffee after the lecture. And yeah, I, think I wasn't sure that you knew you haven't come yet. <laughs> Well, I'll go next week, but um, I think that's a really nice idea because sometimes law school can feel a bit isolating and um, it's really nice for you to bring that kind of offer to students and allow them to engage with you on a, you know, outside a class level, which is yeah, really good. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I decided to do it this year because there were some students who, you know, in the course of helping them in my last course, mm -hmm. um, they said, oh, you know, we feel like a bit of a number at law school. We feel like, yeah. you know, we're, as from high school where we felt, you know, really connected. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me, and I, I sort of thought, well, you know, I, I see all my colleagues, and and there's no doubt that everybody cares and and tries really hard to engage with um, with students. But mm. I thought, well, how can we address that issue of um, people feeling like they're a bit of a number? And so I thought, well, I'll just put the offer out there, and if students want to take it up and come along um, for a coffee, and and we just go along and we we talk about anything. We talk about you know their jobs, their careers, law school. Um, you know, if they've got a bit of a you know, an ethical dilemma, do I apply for this clerkship or that clerkship? And literally we just throw it open and they not only get my advice for what it's worth, but they also get the advice of, um, of other students. And um, and I think that's been really beneficial as well. So yeah, yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it, I think, and hopefully as much as they are. Yeah, I think it, it'll be really useful and uh, I'll see you there next week. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, uh, what's not to love? <laughs> that's right. Um, and my next question, I think it comes down to your, you know, your passion in labour law. Mm -hmm. So it's my semester um, starting with you doing labour law. I've previously done corporations law with Cam. Mm. And um, you've always got this enthusiasm towards employment, uh, employment law and rights and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just wanted to know what got your interest in labour law? Where did you first For come me, across it? For me, labour law was the subject that made the other laws make sense. So mm -hmm. when I came to law school, to be honest, I, I did it because I got the marks to do it. Um, I didn't really know what else to do. And so I thought, oh, law seems reasonably interesting. I'll do that. And I wasn't particularly inspired early on. I found contracts and other areas of law quite dull and boring. Yeah. I think they're quite interesting now, but at that point <laughs> I found them quite quite boring and I was thinking, oh God, what on earth, what relevance does this have to ordinary people? Mm. And, um, and then um, I came to labour law and I suddenly realised that the laws concerning 
um, the law of, uh, of contract um, applied in labour law, or, albeit in, in you know, different ways. Yeah. And so suddenly that brought contract law to life and gave it a purpose and a meaning that it, it hadn't had before. And of course the other collective aspects of labour law, um, I started to realise that how what, what a significant role they play underpinning sort of the conditions of work that we all enjoy. And so for me it was a law that was both commercial, which I quite enjoyed, intellectually interesting but also with a real connection to people and that for me was really important so that that sort of started my um, lifelong interest in labour law. Yeah I think I'd have to agree agree with you because um, you know, when I first took contracts as a subject mm -hmm. I never forget the time when I went home that afternoon and just was like oh maybe I should take a look at my lease contract and then my employment contract <laughs> and then you start contemplating all the ways that kind of contracts um, you know yeah, exactly. come to life. Exactly, and your mobile phone contract. Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, marriage contract, not yet. <laughs> but um, Put it yeah, off for a while. No, not for a while. Um, but in terms of employment contract, it's mm. so essential to your life because you know it dictates your working hours, your exactly. salary, um, you know your superannuation mm. for future on. So it's really important, and I think that's something why I chose to study labour law with you this semester as well. Yeah, no, I agree. It really has that personal dimension to it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Um, another subject that I think you've just recently uh, taken was the public sector labour law. I just wanted to know what's the public sector got that um, the private doesn't? Yeah, it's really interesting. The public service and the employment conditions governing public servants have changed quite a lot in the last hundred years that we've had, mm -hmm. or a little over a hundred years that we've had a Commonwealth public service. Yeah. Um, and I guess there's some, there's some really interesting um, aspects of it, like Commonwealth public sector employers um, have in some respects more powers than private sector employers okay. but equally Commonwealth public servants themselves often have more rights than private sector employees and so it's an interesting you know balance between those additional powers but those additional rights as well and I think the actual public administrative element of public sector employment law gives it a little twist that perhaps private sector employment law doesn't always have so um, I find that a really interesting sort of take on employment law more generally. I'm sure there'll be a very practical subject as well in Canberra. With, you know, public yeah, it is. We're always trying to build up the, um, you know, the, the the recruitment base for it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is. We always, and, it, and that's the great thing about teaching it, because you get people from the various government departments that oh, come yeah. along, and so it actually ends up being, you know, I can teach them about the cases and things that they may not have time to cover in their, um, you know, in their work lives, but they also teach me about what's happening on the ground, so I really enjoy it. Mm, great, a bit of quid pro quo yeah, there. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, my next question is a little bit simple, but I just wanted to know, if you were to choose between an employer and employee, which one would you prefer to be? <laughs> Depends mm. whether I'm feeling risky or feeling safe. Mm, good um, <laughs> I think, mostly, I'd choose to be an employee, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is that, me personally, I prefer uh, I, I put quite a high value on um, job security and mm -hmm. um, and um, you know making sure that I've got enough money for the mortgage and things like that. Yeah. Um, having said that, I do really admire people with an entrepreneurial spirit. My parents owned their own small business, and and you know I saw how hard they worked in their small business, and and of course um, you know you often see people in startups and things like that, and I really admire their dedication and their sense of adventure and, and mm -hmm. spirit. But probably for me. I would prefer um, employment. What kind of business was it, out of curiosity? Um, my parents owned a camping and disposal store. Mm -hmm. And, you know, over time, of course, that, I mean, I think that would be a very, very hard market now with all the large um, multinationals that are in that space. Yeah, the big chain companies. Yeah, that's right. So does that mean you've got a love for camping or not really? <laughs> no, not at all, actually. <laughs> my brother quite likes it, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely more of a four to five star hotel kind of person <laughs> yeah. than a camping. It's often the way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it's been so ingrained for you to yeah, like not, it. Not, you not, my, not my thing, no. <laughs> that's fair enough. Um, I think another question that I've uh, got to ask you is that um, what, what's the kind of best part about labour law? What's been the biggest reform that you've seen or what's been the most substantial change that's kind of opened your eyes? I think the biggest, looking back on it, and I don't know that we, we fully appreciated it at the time, mm -hmm. but I think probably the biggest actual legal reform in labour law that I've seen is probably the shift from centralised awards under the conciliation and arbitration system mm -hmm. to an enterprise bargaining system that occurred under the Keating government's 1993 reforms. I think they were probably the biggest shift and have been the biggest influencer of our current Fair Work Act, but I think the other shift has also been the move to um, 
a greater use of independent contracting and labour hire mm. and certainly the rise of on-demand work um, oh, for in sure, recent yeah. times. Uh, I think that's spot on actually, yeah. There's definitely been a shift um, over time with the way that employment works. Mm. And I just probably want to know your opinion as well on, you know, artificial intelligence. Do you think that they're going to take over, um, you know, employment? <laughs> I think they'll always have a job, so don't worry. Good. Um, okay. But um, I'm, I'm, I take a pretty optimistic view of this. Mm -hmm. um, I think that artificial intelligence and the improvements in technology are uh, an unstoppable force in mm. modern society, and I, I, I can see those, um, th I can see that area growing in importance. Okay. And I don't think we'd want to stop it because, and whilst we could, nothing's inevitable. I don't think we would want to stop it because of the incredible benefits that I think will come with that artificial intelligence. Um, that said. Uh, will it have an impact on jobs? A I think absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there'll be some jobs of today that won't be here tomorrow. My yeah. feeling though, and my, my, my view on how that's best dealt with for a society, because obviously we need jobs um, to create the sort of cohesion that we want in society. Yeah. My view on how to deal with that is through education and through upskilling today's workers to take on tomorrow's jobs. Yeah. And I, I am pretty confident that we'll do that. I think we've got basically settings that are going to take us in that direction in this country and I think um, I feel pretty optimistic about that. Yeah I think you're right and you know they always need someone to put in the batteries well, exactly. and robots. If the, if so. it, yeah when the robot needs to be plugged in and recharged someone will need to plug it in. Exactly. So there'll Let's be a person a, somewhere. A job and a lot that. of jobs too like um, I think you know it, um, care work and things like mm. that. Um, teachers I, can, I can't see our kids I can see artificial intelligence being incorporated into the learning of, um, of students but I can't see the need for teachers to be replaced. So I'm feeling immensely relieved. Yeah, well, me too, studying yeah. law. <laughs> Don't That's want to right. give up now. I'm not going to be swapped out for a robot. You'll be happy with good, that. Good, good. Yeah. Uh, now on that note, uh, I think we might uh, wrap up the conversation. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to thank you so much for taking the time out and uh, sharing some of your life with uh, the rest of the viewers today. Mm -hmm. um, I better go and write this labour law essay and <laughs> not keep you too long. <laughs> That's right. No, um, it's great to chat to you. And um, thanks very much for having me on. My pleasure, Cam. Um, and tune in next time for Ask an Academic and uh, see who's going to be the next uh, senior lecturer who will be talking with you next. Thanks. Right.